everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's review we're going to be taking a look at the newly released Top Gun and Transformers collaboration, that being Maverick. Maverick here was a figure that to be honest with you I wasn't all that enthusiastic for, however taking a look at him here in the packaging at least for what I can see of his F-14 Tomcat jet mode, he actually has turned out really nicely. Starting off firstly by taking a look here at the packaging you can see that we do have the Top Gun logo there, we also do have a dog tag with Maverick's name as well as the date in which I believe the first movie came out and then a date in which I believe the second movie was going to come out however due to the pandemic that movie has unfortunately been postponed. We have a really awesome image here of Maverick in his robot mode. I really do hope that the figure looks half as good as the artwork that we do get here. We've got the Transformers logo there at the top, a perfect window view display there of Maverick in the packaging. We also do have the Top Gun and Transformers collaboration piece actually behind this section. As we take a look at it from this particular angle you can see here that we can get quite a good look at the figure from all angles which in my opinion is fantastic. Flipping around here to the back of the packaging we we have a really cool image here of Maverick just about to land on this landing bay. Once again, we do have the Top Gun and Transformers collaboration sticker, cool sign Maverick, and then finally the other side of the packaging just has some various logos and Easter eggs based upon the movie. So without further ado, let's crack Maverick open. For me, I'm going to come in from this angle as the other angle is just plastic. So just unsnip this section here, trying to once again preserve the packaging and then come to this section just gently slice this section here off. Once that's done, we can then turn our attention here to the bottom. They really have sellotaped this one up here a lot better than what they did with Gigawatt. And just slice that off. And I believe that is all of the sellotape removed on this particular figure. So we can open this section here out and then come to this section here and pull this out, which will then hopefully allow us to just take this and remove this. And here we have Maverick and just giving you a quick look here at the instruction manual. It is fully colorized, which I was not expecting whatsoever. In my opinion, I think that this looks incredible. And then just opening this up so you can have a look there of some of the steps. I have heard that this is supposed to be a really heavy retool of the Studio Series helicopter dropkick. However, I'm not really seeing it now by looking at the instructions, but I'll be sure to let you know once I've transformed this figure and of course review him. So just very quickly giving you a look of how he comes packaged. We do have all of the accessories here in this bubble clamp here on the side. And I really do love the backdrop that they've actually put in for this figure. For those of you who are mint in box collectors, I'm pretty sure this is going to make for a really nice looking display piece. So without further ado, let's crack Maverick open and take a look at him in closer detail. And so here we have Maverick opened up and out of the packaging and I definitely do believe that this figure is either going to be a love it or hate it scenario. There are some things with this figure that in my opinion look absolutely awful and then there are some really nice redeeming attributes. Before we take a look at the figure first, I first of all want to cover some of the accessories. We do of course get Tom Cruise's motorbike in the movie and I do think that the sculpt work as well as the paint applications have come out really nicely on this particular piece. Considering its scale, I think that they've managed to capture all of the details and you can for sure tell what it is supposed to replicate. As it is an incredibly small piece, we do have a small plinth that it will rest on and just for a comparison, there you have it next to Maverick himself. And personally for me, I think that the scale here actually doesn't look too bad. We do also get a volleyball, however this is mainly for the robot mode. You can see that the sculpt work on this is actually quite nice and we do also quite surprisingly get one pair of interchangeable hands. So you can see that these ones here are slightly more open palms than as opposed to the more gun holding hands that do come man on the figure. However, I'll discuss more about these later on in the review. Taking a look here at Maverick in his top cap jet mode. For the most part, I think the sculpt work on this particular piece looks immaculate. It is merely the paint applications that I believe severely let this figure down. Now, in the movie, it does have this almost singed, rather dilapidated effect going on for it. And I do believe that that is what Hasbro have tried to replicate here. However, the type of plastic in which they have used is very similar to that of the Siege Ape Face. And by that, I mean that it has a very soapy look, especially when in hand but setting those criticisms off here to the side and taking a look there at the details I think that we have some really nice looking decals going on here especially for the front of the cockpit you can see that we've got some really nice looking paintwork there and I really do love the accuracy to the movie as we take a look there for the cockpit you can see that we do also have some nicely sculpted and interior detailing as well as some really awesome silver rings around where the cockpit actually is turning it to the other side we do once again have some very similar details to that of the opposite side so that in my opinion is really awesome you can see that the weathering effect that they have tried to actually put on the figure in order to match the movie appearance is very similar to what we got with the Siege figures in the sense that the battle damage looked as if though it was digitally printed on and you 
you can for sure see that with this particular release. I don't think that it looks awful, however, I really do believe that if they would have changed the colour of plastic, or if they would have given it a slightly more metallic finish, it would have greatly amplified the look of it, as, to be honest with you, the sculpt work on this particular piece looks really nice. You can see that we do have some nice red and blue paint applications there as we take a look here to the back. We once again do have some nice decals there on the fins. I think that the thrusters here at the back have come out really nicely, and from a side profile as well, considering this figure does transform, I think that they have tried their best to actually minimise the undercarriage. As we take a look at it here from the other side, you can once again see that we do have another decal. We do have some yellow paint applications here on either sides of the wings, as well as some numbers printed here along the side. The wings too are also articulated, which in my opinion is a really nice attention to detail and was something that they didn't have to pack into this figure. So if you want the jet looking slightly more dynamic, you can definitely compress those or you can totally extend them to your so desire. As we take a look here under the underside, we do have some missile pods here, as well as what I believe are either the fuel capsules or perhaps bombs, but you can see under here that the detailing on them is rather nice, but you can once again really see here that soapy-like plastic that they have used on this figure. He does have some landing gear at the front of the vehicle, however, it is just sculpted in and is not painted, and this can be collapsed in order to give you a slightly more sleeker profile. So overall, in terms of jet mode, whilst there are some really nice redeeming attributes, there are for sure some major downfalls with this particular release, as stated, mainly due to the type of plastic that they have used. In terms of a size comparison, unfortunately, I don't have all that much to actually compare him with, but whilst comparing Maverick here next to a Deluxe Class Studio Series figure, you can see that the jet mode is definitely very substantial in terms of its size. I would say that it could potentially pass as a now modern leader class figure. It is that big. I for sure believe that it's bigger than that of the Earthrise and Siege Starscream in their jet mode, so it definitely is rather large when compared here next to the Deluxe Class Roadbuster. But without further ado, let's turn to the transformation here of Maverick. Now, something worth noting is that at the beginning of the review, I did state that this could potentially have a very similar transformation to that of the Helicopter SS Dropkick. However, I can assure you that the transformation is completely new for this figure, which was quite surprising, as his robot mode is very similar to that of that particular Dropkick figure. So to begin with, you're going to want to turn here to the underside and just remove all of the accessories. So just take these sections here and remove those. We can then come here to the arms and I like to just take those and loosen them up from their respective tabs. We can then turn our attention here to the top and just take these pieces here and snap those into place. We are then going to want to take the wings and just extend those to allow for some clearance. Take these sections and compress those, which will then allow you to take these and just gently wriggle that there out to the side. And of course, repeat the same process here for this side. You're then going to want to take this and you can see that we do have a small tab that will peg into a slot that is situated here. So just snap that nice and securely into place, ensuring that that is all aligned up. We can then turn our attention here to the underside and what you're going to want to do here is take the arms and just hinge those out of the way as this entire section is going to come down. And as you do this, you're going to want to take this section here of the nose cone, detach this, and then as this comes over, you will see that this here will slide and clip into place. Now, as you do this, these two pieces here will spring out. It's almost like a Mecha Life gimmick, so just to demonstrate that to you, you can see that these are compressed. As you bring this down, they will slightly spray apart in order to give him a slightly more transformed look for the robot mode. So just snap that in there nice and securely. We can then turn our attention here to the front and you're going to want to lift these flaps here and bring down these gray pieces here first and they will actually click into place. We can then bring down the rest of the foot and snap that in and then collapse that. Repeat the same process here for the opposite side. So just take this, click that into place and repeat the same process, snap that there nice and securely. With that now done, we can turn our attention here to this section, and this is where things can get slightly convoluted. You're going to want to take this whole piece here and swivel this all the way around. What you'll then want to do is take this here and hinge this in a way so that the fists are going to face the correct way when we collapse this all in. So the best way to actually tell that you have got these on the right way is just to rotate those and you can see that as this is going to come down, this will indeed be the correct hand. If you rotate it the other way and it is wrong, you will of course have to undo all of the necessary steps. So with that now done, we can turn our attention here to this piece and I recommend taking this and it is on a double hinge joint. So just pull this over the top we can then take this whole section in here and hinge these pieces out along the sides. Snap this into place and you can see that this black piece will fill out that hollow section. Repeat the same process here on this side. So just snap that into place and you can see two tabs here and here that will peg into two slots here. So just snap those nice and securely into place. Rotate this around, lift up the shoulder pad. Of course, repeat the same process, take the wings down and just compress those. We can then take the head 
and align that up appropriately and there we have Maverick fully transformed up into his robot mode. Now before we take a look at Maverick I first of all want to bring in these fuel canisters or perhaps missiles and you're going to want to take this section and just rotate this forwards and this will create an almost shotgun here for Maverick when in robot mode of course repeat the same process here on the other one and you can see that we do actually have some quite nice looking skull work in there however unfortunately they are completely unpainted and it is really here that you can see that they have once again used that almost very soapy plastic that we did indeed get with Siege Ape Face which in my opinion is a major letdown but just setting those there off to the side we can then turn our attention here to the back and you're going to want to take these missile pods here and it's really up to your own personal preference on how you tab them in for me I like to just take these here snap those so that we have something that looks along the lines of this and then we have Maverick fully transformed and in my opinion looking okay this figure certainly isn't the best crossover figure that we have ever gotten especially with releases such as Ectotron and of course the most recent Gigawatt I really do believe that this is a step in the wrong direction in terms of crossovers but bringing Maverick in here for a closer look you can see that this figure bears no resemblance to that of Tom Cruise whatsoever however of course it's not going to you can see that it does appear as if though that he is wearing a helmet and you can see there we do have the Maverick Maverick text painted there at the top and I think that the paint applications have come out really nicely especially as we take a look here at the back you can see that they haven't skimped out on that whatsoever the visor too has been painted in this really awesome metallic red as so has the actual mouthpiece as well you can see that that is done in a really nice glossy looking black as we take a look for the rest of the robot mode you can see that it is mainly unpainted especially here in robot mode there are some subtle areas where we have this texturing detailing which is a carryover from the jet mode however the forearms and of course the fires here areas of which you don't see in jet mode have gone completely untouched and the same can also be said here for the backs of the wings and as we take a look here down to the lower section the figure is incredibly plain he doesn't even have that much sculpting and detailing so personally for me unless you're a huge Top Gun fan or just a really huge fan of these crossovers in general I certainly do believe that this figure could potentially be a miss turning to articulation we do get a ball joint here at the head which can look left to right as well as up and down the arms here can hinge out to the sides as well as rotate the full 360 however are restricted due to the way that this whole section is design this is unable to actually hinge back so you will be unable to utilize that full range of motion we do get a full 360 rotation here at the bicep as well as a well past 90 degree range of motion here on a single hinged elbow we do get wrist rotation which I was quite surprised to see we unfortunately do get no waist rotation whatsoever due to the nature of the transformation the legs can kick forwards that far as well as back that far they can also ratchet very softly out to the sides we do also get a swivel here at the fire as well as a 90 degree bend there at the knee and then finally turning here to the feet we get a very slight range of motion here due to the ankle rocker joint so overall for me I personally don't particularly like this Maverick figure whatsoever as stated unless you're a diehard Top Gun fan or perhaps a really big fan of these crossovers I for sure think that this figure here could potentially be a miss now turning to some of the integration of the accessories to begin with you're going to want to take this here and essentially just slide this off it is on a mushroom peg we can then bring in one of the alternate hands and just slide this section on it is very stiff to actually do so but with this one we do get a peg which we can then bring in the volleyball and you can snap that into place as well a really nice easter egg to the movie but of course if this is the display that you wish to have Maverick in on the shelf I for sure think that it looks rather awesome and here for a very quick robot mode size comparison here we have Maverick compared next to that of the Voyager class Soundwave and you can see that as stated when in the jet mode I certainly believe that if this figure was to be released as part of the regular line that he would potentially be classed as that of a modern day leader class you can see that he is indeed significantly bigger than Soundwave however just when holding the figure Soundwave definitely feels a lot Lot more substantial in terms of the plastic sound wave here is a little bit more dense and a little bit more compact when compared to next to Maverick with Maverick it does appear as if though due to his slender design all of the plastic is indeed in a slightly more thinner configuration hence why it does give you the illusion that this is a bigger figure however with Soundwave to be honest with you he is definitely a lot more substantial than that of Maverick and to be honest with you I don't think that the plastic on this particular figure is all that great either as stated before it's certainly that rather soap like plastic that we did get on Ape Face which I keep going on about but honestly it's just a awful plastic that I really wish that they hadn't used on this particular figure and so some final thoughts here for the Top Gun and Transformers collaboration if you haven't guessed already throughout this review I am certainly not a big fan of this particular release by Hasbro I believe that Maverick here had the potential to be something really special however they appear to have completely dropped the ball quite literally in terms of how this figure looks I really don't like the look of his robot mode whatsoever whilst I'm pretty sure that it may appeal to some people I just think that the really lanky looking legs as well as the really 
skinny looking biceps does not look all that great whatsoever and the color scheme in robot mode is just so bland the transformation surprisingly is actually quite enjoyable however as stated it is a completely brand new transformation that I haven't seen utilized on any other figure before so that personally for me is one of the redeeming factors of this particular release and I do believe that his jet mode for the most part as well especially where the sculpt work is concerned is really faithful to how it appeared in the Top Gun movie but once again I think that this figure's biggest complaint is the type of plastic that they have used I really do believe that if they had just used the standard grey plastic that we have seen on some of the previous figures and perhaps had given it a slightly metallic finish that would have greatly amplified the figure's look I have no issues whatsoever with the actual weathered effect or the paint effect that they have utilized here whilst it for sure looks digitally created I really don't believe that it is an issue whatsoever it is just merely the color of plastic that they have used which is in my opinion a major letdown I do believe that he comes with quite a nice array of accessories and accessories which are indeed movie specific so that for sure will once again really please those of you who are Top Gun fans I also do think that the packaging on this particular figure here is really awesome so personally if you don't really have much of a desire to display Maverick in his robot mode I would recommend just leaving him in the package in his jet mode as I think that that is potentially one of the better display options you are going to get out of this figure I really do hope that you enjoyed this review and once again I do apologize if it does appear as if though I am bashing this release it's just there are some major flaws in my opinion which could have been rectified if only they had just changed the shade of plastic I thank you all so much for watching this review and until my next review I'll see you then thanks for watching